Hello there, and welcome to Alvarez's Diecast Customs. Now today we're going to be working on this 1969 Dodge Charger from Hot Wheels. I've done one of these before, I think it was one of my second customs on the channel. I did a pretty simple custom on it previously, or I just repainted it and put some new wheels on it. I want to go a bit further with this one. Anyway, let's take a closer look at it in the meantime. A really cool car. I really do like the Dodge Charger. Really like the style of it. As you can see, I've already taken the time to drill the base out on this one. Start off with a 2mm drill bit and then work up to a 5mm to remove the main piece of the head off. I like to use some 5mm self tapping screws to screw the base back on. So here's that old Dodge Charger that I did previously. You can see it did come out quite nicely. I highlighted some of the chrome trim with the chrome pen. It was a really good custom overall. Really do like the look of it. But as I said, I just really like the Dodge Charger, so wanted another shot at it on this one. I'll just get it all taken apart. Let's look at what we're dealing with. Yeah, plastic base. Go about removing those wheels. There's our interior piece. Quite nicely detailed, that is. I do like the way they've got like the little seats and everything with the details of the cushions. Window piece, smoke grass. Because it is. Body. Yep, get that stripped up. Base, let's get these wheels removed. So I'll just be using these side cutters. Simply just remove one of the teeth on one side of the axles and then the wheels just pop out. There we go. Get the front ones off too. Sorted. So I've already stripped the paint now. Left it in a pot paint stripper for about an hour, then rinsed it under a tap and used an old toothbrush to scrub the remaining bits of the paint off. These wheels will be getting rid of them. I've decided to go with these ones. These nice real riders, sort of look steel looking rims on them. However, the axles are a bit too short, so don't allow the act limit. They don't allow them to actually sit into the chassis, so we're going to have to make up some axle tubes for those in the meantime. And also on the chassis piece, I want to lower it ever so slightly. As you can see, it's got a lot of like headroom there with those fake springs and sort of little semicircle bits. So I'm going to go about removing those as well. Simply just grab a piece of fine sandpaper, lay it onto the desk, and just grind it off. So after a bit more grinding on that, that's what we're left with. I keep grinding on it until I can feel the metal body starting to bite on the sandpaper and that's when I know I've gone as far as I need to. And that is completely flush now. And because of that I also need to uh, file out some of the wheel arches on this as well because now the wheels are going to be sitting a bit higher in the chassis and in the body. I'm going to need to file them out just so the wheels don't rub on the archways. The original wheels are the same circumference as the new ones that I've got. So I'll just be using the old ones as a quick guide. Using a pen just to casually mark out where the wheel sort of height is. Yeah, it's a rough estimate of where I need to grind to. There we go, that's what we're left with. I did this down in the garden shed. I used my Dremel with one of the sand and drums. 
a large one on the rear and a slightly smaller one at the front and just grind those down. Very quick and easy to do. Left with a perfect circular cut as well when you do it like that. So I'll just be using my diamond file again, just going around filing all the edges down, just smoothing it all over. Just really going over everything on this. I also want to remove the door handles as well. I really want a very sort of smooth, flush sort of body look to this. So as you can see, this is the other side I've done earlier. It's got a really sleek look to that with the door handles removed and it really smoothed over. And those uh, archways a lot smoother. Really changed it to the body shape on that, I feel. So yeah, I spent a bit more time cleaning it up, cleaning out some of the uh, molding lines and creases. Get into a right old mess doing that. But yeah, this is what we left with. So yeah, it's all looking very sleek and smooth now. As a comparison, I just wanted to show the first one I did. I did have some trouble filing off the... Uh, Molding lines at the back here, which I've tried to address this time, as you can see. I've also went about removing that fuel filler cap as well. I really wanted a very sleek look to this build, so that had to go. Now I'm going to be using the Milliput clay for the archways again. I used some cuts, off cuts of a Coca Cola can, and just super glued them into the archways of that as a good guide. Also used a bit of plastic card cut to shape for the front splitter. So we've got some work to do with that as well. I'm also going to be grinding off the details of that front grille. I don't really want the headlights and the grille on it. I just want a very smooth finish. So I'm simply just going to use a square file and grind the crap out of it into it. There we go. That's what you're left with after that. So onto that milliput, you see me use this crap before. It's just two part epoxy sort of clay. You mix two parts together in equal amounts and you're left with this very fine, malleable clay. Just use a very small amount for each archway. So sort of roll it into little sausage shapes and simply just press it onto the body, onto the where my coke can guides are. It's very sticky, which is good though, because it means it sticks to the body very easily. And we go this after a bit of time, just roughly molding those to shape. I use more than I need because I'd rather use a lot more on there and then I can just shape it once it's dry. It's a lot easier to do it like that than adding more once you've grinded too much off. So I've let that cure for about a day and it's rock hard, ready to go. So just be using a range of tools like some sanding sticks, an emery board and a scalpel and a file just to get this cut sort of grinded down to shape and cut. So I spend a while just working on this. Work on one side at a time. Once I get the general shape I'm after on one side, I try and emulate it on the other. And this is after a very long time of grinding this all down to shape and getting it to where I need it. You can see I also cleaned up the front splitter piece as well. Blended that in. And we've got to clear all this up again. And in the meantime, I've went ahead and painted it. I initially start off with a grey primer straight out of a spray can, as you can see on the interior piece in the wheels, and then went over the base and the body in a matte black, also out of a spray can. No airbrush for me, can't afford that kind of thing. Don't even have anywhere to put it currently, other than in a garden shed, but it's very damp and covered in spiders, so it's not really a nice place to be sitting and painting for a long time. 
So I just want to pick out some of the details on here with the chrome trim, just using this Molotow chrome pen. I like to stick the body onto the helping hands like this while I do this. It keeps it very supported and keeps my fingers away from the chrome pen paint. And there we go, that's that done. Set that side to dry. In the meantime, we just go about removing the tires from these wheels because I want to paint those in, in silver as well. This is a Ravel silver. Simply just brush painting this on. Do all four wheels with it. There we go. Also going to be doing the front and rear bumper as well on the chassis. So just pick that out. And there's the front one being done there. Interior piece, I wanted to darken the grey slightly, so I used some Revell Tank Grey. Just go over the entire interior piece with that. There we go, let that dry. And in the interior on the chassis, not forgetting the footwell area, paint that in the tank grey as well. Because that is visible through some of the uh, footwell holes on the front seats. Good to tie it all together with that. Also, as you know, I do like my Citadel Non Oil on my builds just to blend everything in and sort of give it a bit more of an earthy used texture to it. Simply just a black wash this is. So I'll be using this on the wheels just to give them a bit more depth because they look a bit plain and simple with just the silver paint. So this, as you can see, once added to this, really highlights the details on these, really makes them pop. Same. Also get onto that other side as well. Interior gets hit with a good coat of known oil as well. Really brings out the detail on those seats there. covered on everything. So as you're as you may not know, I'm on Instagram under Alvarezazel. Do check me out on there and give me a follow. I've got teasers and other bits and bobs on there of some of my artwork and whatever. So yeah do check me out there. Anyway it's time to get this thing put back together. As a window piece, I highlighted some little details like the window wipers and some of the silver trim with the chrome pen. Interior there, a little bit of extra detail. Also, not forgetting to paint the wheel well areas that you can see through the uh, archways of the wheels in some black paint. There's our base. I neglected to record me uh, filling in the tail lights there with some Tamiya clear red and also on the chassis I just painted some rear details in in Tamiya metallic grey and then just gave it a non oil coat very simple just get this put back together with those 5mm self tapping screws so before I reveal it let's go and take a look back at what we started with there's a great looking little charger. Really do like the stylings of it. One of Hot Wheels better castings, I think. So let's just take a look at what we ended up with. How's that for a clear coat, eh? Really nice, this one. Really do like how this came out in the end. One of my favourite customs so far, in my opinion. I really do like how those wheels sit with it. It's got a very aggressive look to it. Still rolls nicely on those wheels. 
can see a lot of the plastic card details I added as well, which I neglected to record me doing as well. I don't know why I forgot to record so much of this build, but oh well. You can see it all at the end here anyway. So simply just use some plastic card for some sights, for some side skirts and also for the rear spoiler. Just glued directly onto the body before painting. I really do like how that chrome trim contrasts with the rest of the body in the black. Simple looking base, you can see where we flattened it out which allows it to sit a bit lower than normal. An absolute fingerprint magnet this is though. Being very glossy black paint. Attracts all the dust in the fingerprints. I do hope you've enjoyed watching me put this one together. It's been one of my favourite customs so far for me. I really do love how this come out. It sits really nicely. Looks really good on the shelf next to my other customs I've done. Very pleased with it. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of it as well. Always appreciate the comments, positive or negative, whatever. It's all good to me. Just leave you with some more shots of it in the meantime. I'll catch up with you in a bit. You can really see how good that gloss paint came out on there. That was a clear coat from Halfords, a polyurethane based one. Just did two coats of it. A couple of days drying time because it does stay quite soft for a while. But this is what you're left with with the efforts that go into it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching. This has been Alvarez's Diecast Customs and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.